My goal for this video is to hopefully clear up some confusion that people might have about Toyota Sequoias and their four-wheel drive systems that they have on board and hopefully clear up a lot of confusion that people might have and hopefully prevent them from asking uh, fairly unnecessary questions on the Facebook groups and in forums. I feel like a lot of the confusion when it comes to the four-wheel drive system on these vehicles is probably a result of there being one additional button that is on board that a lot of other traditional four-wheel drive vehicles don't have, and that button is for the center locking differential. Now what we're going to do in this video is, right here, I've got a diagram, and my goal here is to hopefully illustrate to you very clearly what all of the different operating modes of the four-wheel drive system on board a Toyota Sequoia does, how it works, how to select it, and what it's best suited for. And I should hopefully be demonstrating a lot of that to you on our own Toyota Sequoia. And also I think it's worth noting that uh, a lot of this information will apply to other Toyotas as well. So uh, I think like 4Runners, Lexus GX 470s, uh, 460s, 100, 200 series Land Cruisers, a lot of this information will apply in a general sense, although there might be a few specifics that are different from vehicle to vehicle. But with that in mind, we will go ahead and get started by talking about what uh, a basic four-wheel drive system uh, will include. So what I've got here on the bottom is a diagram of a part-time four-wheel drive system. This is a very standard setup this is kind of the way things all began with four-wheel drive back in the days of, you know, uh, pickup trucks and in the early days of SUVs. This is pretty much the only thing you'd have. You'd have the engine, which outputs power to the transmission, which then in two-wheel drive just goes straight to the rear differential, and then the diff in the back will divide the power between the two wheels. But when you select four-wheel drive, a slightly different process will take place. The engine will send power to the transmission through the transfer case down the drive shaft to the rear diff, but that transfer case will also allocate some of the power to the front diff. Now it's important to note here at this point that the transfer of power, hence the name transfer case that takes place here, is a true 50-50 split of power. So that means Power goes to the transfer case, it sends 50% to the rear, and it sends 50% to the front. This is a very normal transfer case that you'd find in like, you know, pickup trucks and body on frame SUVs. It's also important to note that the power here is locked in the transfer case. So if the power in the rear slips, it doesn't matter because 50% of the power will still go to that front axle. So uh, so if your rear wheels are spinning, your front wheels still should pull you over whatever, you know, obstacle you're trying to go over. And vice versa. If the front wheels are spinning, the rear will still get power as well. And then also the transfer case in vehicles like this has the ability to switch to low range gearing. So that means that uh, it can switch to using a completely different set of, uh, of drive gears and uh, to give you more low end power and it will give you better throttle control and more power at uh, lower RPMs. So knowing this about a part-time four-wheel drive system will help us to understand how a full-time system is different. So in a full-time four-wheel drive vehicle, you have uh, essentially a lot of the same components, but with some slight differentiations. So you have the engine to the transmission and then power will always be sent to the rear diff and the front diff. So the center differential is the different component that we have here. So the trans transfer case will always be splitting that power to the front and rear axle, but the center diff will sit here and it will allow for slip to take place between the front and the rear axle. Basically what this allows you to do is to use four wheel drive to have additional traction, but that center differential will allow for uh, differences in the speed between the front and the rear. So if you're, uh, if you're driving on a hard pack surface or if you've got like, uh, you know, you're, you're driving on, uh, let's say just pavement for instance, that center differential will mean that your drivetrain does not 
uh, bind together. So it'll allow for you to go around corners very smoothly, whereas a part-time four-wheel drive system, when you've got it in four-wheel drive with the 50-50 power split locked between the two axles, if you go around a corner with the wheel turned very sharply, you'll get drivetrain binds. So you'll feel the system starting to lock together. If you turn it really tight and keep going, you'll start to hear you know your tires skipping, or um, you know you'll you'll start to hear some spin take place. Just just a small amount, and it'll make your tight turns very difficult to make. Now I say all that to say that the first gen Toyota Sequoias. Uh, basically have the ability to do both systems and the reason it's able to do that is because it has all the same components of a full-time four-wheel drive situation but the center differential has the added benefit of being able to lock together now let's go ahead and explain what the buttons on the dash mean in regards to this so if you are driving down the road normally of course you're in two-wheel drive then you also have the two wheel drive slash four wheel drive button. If you press that, which by the way, you can press it while you are on the move, make sure you read your owner's manual to make sure uh, you are using that within the vehicle's recommended speeds for that. But you can press that while you're on the move. Basically what that'll do is that'll engage your transfer case and start to send power to the front axle. So this will basically leave you in full time four wheel drive mode or what I also just like to refer to as all-wheel drive because all-wheel drive vehicles like Subarus or something like that, this is essentially exactly the way they operate. They uh, have a transfer case that splits the power front and rear, but they have a center differential that'll allow for differences in speed between the front and rear axle. So for your Sequoia, when you're in this mode, this means that you can drive uh, as much as you want on pavement and you can turn nice sharp corners and you will not experience any sort of drivetrain binding. This is uh, really ideal for if you are driving on snowy roads, where at times you might need some additional traction, but you also are on uh, pavement and you need to allow for some slip between your front and your rear axle in order to make corners nicely. And you also don't wanna put you know, uh, a bunch of strain on your drivetrain by binding it in, in tight corners. Now in this mode, if you need more traction than what this provides you with, you can press that center differential lock. And what that will do is it will lock the center differential and then the transfer case will then split power evenly between the rear and the front axle, just like if you were using a traditional part-time four-wheel drive system. So with that center differential locked, these two systems will perform basically exactly the same, maybe with some variations, but uh, for all intents and purposes, a full-time four-wheel drive system like the Sequoia has with the center differential locked, these two will perform exactly the same. So as you can see, what Toyota has done is actually really nice for the user of the vehicle because this allows you to use your four-wheel drive um, on the road very easily. You know, if you just needed extra traction, like I said, you know, maybe on uh, just, you know, a gravel road or something like that, snowy roads, you can use uh, the four-wheel drive as if it was an all-wheel drive system. But if you need that additional traction, if you need a more aggressive mode of traction, you can lock that diff and use essentially part-time four-wheel drive. So basically what Toyota has done is give, given the users the option and the flexibility to choose whichever one you want. And in addition to that, the Sequoia also has low range gearing, just like a normal part-time four-wheel drive system has. So essentially you can use the same four-wheel drive low modes as you would in four-wheel drive high. You can put it in four-wheel drive low, which by the way, you have to shift into neutral in order to do that, but you can use four-wheel drive low with the center diff locked and unlocked. Once again, providing a ton of flexibility. Now let's go ahead and talk about what circumstances I would use uh, these different modes for. So of course, two-wheel drive is gonna be just for normal driving around town. That four-wheel drive high mode with the center diff unlocked, like I said, is good for like snowy roads, or just any time you feel like you'd like to have a little bit more traction, you know, maybe on a gravel road or something like that, but you don't need to 
uh, lock the diff, you wanna be able to still make you know tight corners very easily. And then four wheel drive high with the center diff locked is for those cases where you want uh, a lot more traction. So maybe you're driving through uh, deeper snow, uh, but you want to be able to still drive with a little bit of pace. So if you want to, you know, drive, I'd say above 20 miles per hour, four wheel drive high with center diff locked, that's the way to go. And then four wheel drive low modes are, uh, are very good for climbing steep inclines or going down steep declines. So uh, I would use four wheel drive low if I was maybe on a really tight shelf road where you've got to make some really tight switch back going up a hill and you want that low range gearing for climbing more easily but you want to leave that center diff unlocked so you can make corners more easily uh, or i guess you know if you were ever in a circumstance where you were on dry pavement um, and you really needed a lot of torque uh, i don't know maybe for launching a boat on a boat ramp or something like that. You want that low range gearing, but you wanna still be able to make corners without the drivetrain binding together. That's when four wheel drive low with the center diff unlocked will be your best friend. And then four wheel drive low with the center diff locked. That's pretty easy to understand. That's gonna be for times when you're you know, going over boulders, you're doing some pretty intense off-roading, you know, driving through deep mud, deep sand, deep snow. It, it, four wheel drive low is kind of the catch-all for more intense off-road situations. But in addition to that, I recommend people to use four wheel drive low more often than they might think they need to, because if for nothing else, four wheel drive low is really good at taking some strain off of the torque converter in your transmission. So that low range gearing will assist your transmission if you're crawling at low speeds it takes a lot of strain off of it, especially if you're climbing uh, steep hills. And then for going down hills, if you use a lower gear, it'll be really nice for controlling your descent and taking some strain off of your brakes. Now I bring up all of this because I occasionally hear people confused about the Sequoia and they almost think that the Sequoia is less capable of a vehicle because it has a center differential. I, I, I seem to occasionally run across some confusion where people seem to understand that the four-wheel drive system is more like that of a Subaru. It's more of an all-wheel drive system. And that just couldn't be further from the truth. If anything, the Sequoia really is the best of both worlds because you can use it in an all-wheel drive mode, kind of like, you know, a crossover would. But you also have the ability to lock that center diff and get true four-wheel drive, just like a Jeep or a half-ton pickup would. So anyway, I hope that clears up a lot of confusion. If you have any more questions about how the system works, uh, feel free to leave them below. If I neglected to mention something that you know about the system that you think would be helpful for others, please leave a comment and let us know about that too. I'm sure that would be very helpful for everybody watching. And make sure you subscribe. We've got all sorts of other Toyota Sequoia content and a lot of uh, outdoor related content. If you like going outside adventuring in your Toyota Sequoia or whatever vehicle, uh, you like hiking or anything like that, you're probably going to find some content on our channel that you enjoy. So please subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.